hello world welcome back to my channel this video tutorial is dedicated to machine learning and artificial intelligence and in this video we are going to see how to detect breast cancer using convolutional neural networks which is a particular type of artificial neural networks that deals mostly with images so breast cancer is one of the most deadliest diseases in the world and it needs to be solved and it needs to be taken into special consideration so uh, the detection of breast cancer normally is done through traditional methods like mammography or whatever but the inaccuracy with this method has proven to be high and therefore want to make a detection that will give you the accurate results as much as possible therefore we use artificial intelligence so um, we need to train a, an AI model with some data that is breast cancer image data and that data is gotten from uh, Kaggle at the UCI machine learning repository this is a UCI machine learning repository that you can get on Kaggle I'm going to leave the link in the description so this is a UCI machine learning repository where we, where we can collect the uh, the data for, for for our data set then there's also this breast his pathology images from Paul Money on Kaggle where you can collect the images uh, 0 stands for benign and 1 stands for malignant so you can collect the images and store it in your drive so that you can call it when using it in cargo so this is where the data set came from for training the machine learning model then uh, I, I called it in cargo using this code from google collab import files so i saved the file in my in my sandbox now after calling the, the the data set i need to now build a model so building a model i'll use convolutional which is a keras so i need to import keras so this is it i import keras i import tensorflow i import numpy sklearn all the libraries that i'll need for coding that's the first step so once you import all the libraries you need for coding i, I call the uci machine learning data set which is here uh, load breast cancer it's a, it's a particular code that just directly calls it so this is how the the data set looks like these are the main radius, main texture, main par parameter, and etc. So these are the various inputs of the UCI machine learning dataset. This dataset particularly is useful to get the contrition matrix and the the receiving operating characteristic curve. So to plot the contrition, this is a code to plot the mean radius feature and the mean and the train test feature for the training and the test sets. Sorry, then this is a code to plot the mean text feature for the training and the test sets. Okay. So the code to get the rock curve, this is it, by using a plot rock curve classifier x test, x test, y test by first of all calling this gradient boosting classifier. So the rock curve, the area under the rock curve, as we can see, is uh, 0 0.98. The area under the rock curve is a predictive accuracy, which is not actually the accuracy, but is the ratio of the true positive rate versus the false positive rate. We shows uh, the higher the, the higher it is the better the class the classification so this is the code to plot the confusion matrix uh, clf x text y test confusion matrix plot so this is it and from here you can get the accuracy the sensitivity the specificity the precision the false positive rate the f1 score and all the other parameters all right so once we have the confusion matrix we have the uh, the rock curve we can therefore now build the the model the convolutional neural network so we, we need to call it i think we're fully called it this code is not really important uh, i think i can delete this one because that's what even called so this is a file name as i said if you go to this place you download all these files and you save them into two folders first a general folder then two subfolders one for benign and one for malignant okay then you can now call them from here you save it in your in your, in your google drive then you call it into the folder into the into the code by using this this code so once you call it it's going to you give the category benign and malignant so this is just an example to show a, a, a malignant image and an example to show a benign image so since color, uh, convolutional neural networks uses the pulling layer the height and the width of the image is is compressed to 180 by 180 in order to permit uh, pulling so uh, that's been divided into two categories we have the training set which is 
80 percent of the images and the validation set which is 20 percent of the images as we can see uh, 3000 3860 image files as images belonging to two classes 3088 were used for training and the rest were used for validation 772 used for validation so that's what happened so now um you can give a a, a code to give some examples of benign and malignant images that are present so this is a benign image this when this is a malignant image so it's a code just to help us to display using matplotlib to display some some images all right so now once we uh how can i say what we've done here we split the training set and the validation set we give the we give the image height and size and batch size those are the main things we did and we called it so once it has been called and split it now we can do the training okay now the training is done uh, as we are using convolutional neural networks uh, yeah uh, this is it normalize data set we normalize the data set okay after normalizing now we we can train this is the model uh, sequential so the convolutional neural network has three layers we first have the conf 2d that's a convolution layer that does feature extraction using the rectifying linear unit activation then we have the max pooling layer which does the compression of the image size for training then then we have the dense layer which is simply the fully connected layers with the various hidden nodes hidden nodes and the output nodes so these are the three layers of the convolutional neural network so then we can we can compile and train it using the code model compile uh, optimizer adam okay so that is uh here we use 10 epochs and we give the history so this this is how the training went on okay this is how the training went on for the training data set and the validation data set so this is the training we have the validation laws and we have the training laws so and the training accuracy everything so this is it so we see that the the more the epochs the higher the accuracy at the end so that was, that was what it was done to train the data set so we realize that accuracy is greater than 0 .0 .0 0.9 0 0.9 so we can also plot a graph to show the history of the training with time with with the number of epochs which is time so we see the accuracy is increasing for the training and the validation this graph though is not very perfect because the validation also needs to increase just as the training so that was what was done then now data augmentation was done again uh, in order to normalize the the data and uh, it was trained again so using the same convolutional layer this is it i'm going to leave the code in the description so that was what was done then also we are trained now using 15 epochs i trained in using 15 epochs and i had these uh, values so after i trained it again now uh i i plotted the training accuracy versus the validation accuracy which was there all right so now uh this last course as from this level is just to give a it's just to give a test for an image that was done that is after you have trained it you now you want to test a new image to see if it's going to work so i, I just uh, got an image from here then i called it in collab by using this one and i just did the training and that image the result was that the image is most likely benign with 80.65 percent confidence okay so that was all done so what happened was after the training was done i then copied all these piece of codes from the beginning right up to the last code i copied everything and i used a vs code to develop a web application actually that could help me to uh, do the trading for a new data so this is the the web application here breast cancer detection app this prediction was made using finally aspirate images of sample patient data from the uci wisconsin data set okay so we are going to start to check so browse files the folder for example this is a folder final aspirate images there's a benign class and there's a malignant class if i take a benign image for example uh this one and i upload it into the application it's running it's, it's trying to compile and give the accurate prediction then uh, after a while it's going to state give the results by saying that the, the image is most likely benign which is exactly what it was at the beginning showing that 
uh, it's actually classifying it rightly okay if i take a malignant image for instance uh if i go malignant if i go to malignant and I, and I select a malignant image it's a malignant image so he's running and trying to classify he's running 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 and the end is that the image is most likely malignant which is correctly classified because it was first malignant so that's how it is now if you use any other image whether it is not uh, from the whether it's not a, a patient image that is a benign or malignant image the, the the application will still give you classification because it has only been trained using images it knows which is benign or malignant so any other image which is added uh, the, the the system is simply going to do its best to try to give it according to what it has so for instance if i go to images and i select an image which it does not know which is different from what it has been trained with is going to give uh, the most probable outcome of the image for example it says this image is most likely mania all right so that's how it is so um uh so that's uh, how the the classification goes so someone can actually run the app directly for me using the local host but i decided to create an embedded application uh, in order to make it easier and while doing the creation of the application i realized that i had to reduce the number of epochs in order to permit the runtime of the system to be very slow to 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 be very fast actually not slow to, in order to enable the runtime of the system to be fast because if i did not do like that the runtime of the system it will take a long time before giving the results here okay so thank you very much for watching so that was breast cancer classification using uh breast cancer classification using uh, convolutional neural networks so I'm going to allow uh, I'm going to leave all the codes in the in the description below. Thank you so much and uh, God bless you all. Thank you.